rivers in the sky. With more than twice the water as the Amazon, atmospheric rivers bring California much of the water we need for drinking, agriculture, and sustaining life in the Golden State. They can be at times the most hazardous types of storms for the West Coast. Julie Kolansky with CW3E, or Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes, explains they can also provide up to 50 percent of our yearly rain and snow. So it can be very important for our water supply. Um, when, when we don't have atmospheric rivers, it often ends up becoming leading to droughts. That's why researchers at the CW3E in San Diego are trying to better understand these critical and occasional life-threatening storms. And so there's this interest in atmospheric rivers as both being very beneficial in terms of the water supply, but also this uh, sense that they can be hazard hazardous too when they are, you know, like I said, when they are extremely large, but they stall for some period and don't move through as quickly. And climate change is creating the potential for more extreme atmospheric rivers. Warmer air can hold more moisture, meaning when these storms hit, they could deliver more rain than snow in the Sierra. Even life-threatening floods, mudslides, and debris flows where fire has ravaged hillsides. We're definitely seeing more extremes when it comes to weather, whether it be heat or hurricanes or winter storms, um, either intense or lack thereof, uh, which we've definitely seen over the last several years across California. Since protecting life and property is a key focus for the National Weather Service, Michelle says the research from CW3E helps them better understand and forecast the location, duration, and intensity of these large storms. They've come up with some amazing tools to measure the, the water content in these atmospheric rivers, the length, of how long they think it will last, and then the location. Another big benefit to better understanding atmospheric rivers, minimizing the impacts of California's wild swings from wet to dry years. It's bigger than any other state in the country, and climate forecasts are showing those differences are only going to grow in the coming years. So what we've seen in the projections is that there's more variability between year to year precipitation. So what that actually means is some years it may be drier and then some years it will get more of these large storms, large atmospheric rivers. She says they describe it as a sort of whiplash between wet and dry. To average out some of this natural back and forth, the researchers use a combination of computer projection. And so when you look at that, oftentimes the, what the projections are showing is that Southern California actually may become a lot, a bit drier, whereas uh, Northern California may become a bit wetter. If that starts to take shape, the delicate balance of an already challenging water storage network in California could get even more difficult.